<laughs> Today we're going down to Agua Caliente. It is like a park in the middle of the desert and um, has like a 25 foot 100 run, foot runway. And uh, there's kind of terrain around it, so it's a little challenging. But we're going to go down there and hike. It is kind of like the last weekend before it gets super hot and that park closes between <laughs> Memorial Day and Labor Day. <laughs> and um, one of the reasons we're going down there is because we want to um, shoot a food of fafa. Now, food of fafa! Food of fafa started when we were in uh, Paris on our trip, and this is what it looks like. On vacation, we try to do one of these shots like a gangster walk. We leave we, our mark. We leave, yeah, we call it the food of Fafa. So we're going to try to um, do one down at Agua Caliente because it's pretty scenic with all like the desert landscape and stuff. Um, we have our own little twist, surprise twist today. Yeah, so stay tuned to the end to see what that looks like. And uh, all right, excited. let's go flying. I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. Our destination is Lima 54, cruising altitude 7,500. I knew flying down to Agua Caliente Park would be a super fun day with the four of us. And I had a feeling it would make for some challenging flying that would push my personal limits due to the short runway and predicted wind conditions. Agua Caliente Park is a camping park east of San Diego over a small mountain range. Nestled in the Anza Borrego Desert, it's known for its hot spring pools and rugged desert hiking. The route from Whiteman has some fun airspace to navigate through. Transition southbound through Burbank's Charlie. Burbank Tower, Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey, just a part of Whiteman on a uh, straight out. Stay under the LA Bravo at 5,500 feet. 5,500 until we're clear of the Bravo, one Bravo Whiskey. And continue on to the Anza Borrego Desert at 7,500 passing over the Palomar Observatory near Warden Springs Glider Are you guys uh, going direct to Agua Caliente today, or are you going to take a roundabout? Well, we were, uh, we were going direct, and then uh, we were told there's some glider activity here by the uh, Warner Springs that is going to be directly south of us, so we're trying to move over to the east, if that's advisable, when brought whiskey. That's why I was asking. Uh, your current traffic is about your maybe 2 o'clock, moving to 1 o'clock. It appears to be a glider of altitude 5,500. They've been steady around there for a while, but uh, out of your current course, you should be above him. Just maintain the VFR 7,500, and I'll let you know when you can descend once we have the traffic. Okay, I'll uh, maintain 7,500. Oh, guys, I see a glider down there. Do? Probably can't see him where you are. LA Center, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey. We're going to uh, begin our VFR descent for Agua Caliente. It's approved as requested. I'll lose you about 4,000. Just use caution, you're in an area of uh, pretty high terrain. Uh, just for reference, uh, my minimum safe altitude would be 8,000 in your area. Just use caution for the terrain over Julian. All right, great. It's uh, super clear here. We got everything in sight. Thank you, one Bravo Whiskey. Thank you. After the ridge, we, we drop in down into the valley there. Okay. And there's always a good chance at this airfield that, like, I'm going to go full power and go around, and when we do that, I'm going to turn right, right away and climb, pretty steep climb angle. So you guys should be prepared for like, two, 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 pretty, two, pretty steep banks and climb angles, angles down, down here because there's terrain and stuff, but I'll try to make it as smooth as possible. The main challenge with the untowered Agua Caliente Airport is the relatively short 2,500 foot strip that has a big hill half a mile from the approach end of runway 11. All right, there's the airport. That strip over there? Yeah. Okay. Landing to the east on runway 11 can be difficult due to the terrain, but it's definitely doable. See if you guys can spot the windsock off the right here. There's no AWOS or ASOS, so a look at the windsock is super useful. Okay, it looks calm, so... Yeah, it's not doing anything. Okay, cool. I was also able to confirm the wind at pattern altitude with the wind vector display on the HDX. So we'll land on 29. We were lucky to have calm winds for an easier approach to runway 29, postponing having to deal with the terrain until later in the day. Agua Caliente traffic, Cherokee 631, Bravo, excuse me, final runway 29, Agua Caliente. Looking back on this landing, I was nervous to just get the plane on the ground and should have held it off a little longer with more back pressure on the yoke. That was amazing. That was great. That was amazing, Donnie. Nice job. I was actually more scared you were going to put it down before we hit the runway. <laughs> Me too.
I swear to God, if there's a snake, I'm leaving. After we landed, I was glad to see the windsock was still calm, but little did I know things would be very different for our departure. The park entrance is about half a mile from the runway, a perfect opportunity for a scooter ride. The hot springs were closed this time, but maybe they'll reopen in the fall. There are lots of rock formations to climb, and Goomba spotted some bighorn sheep. The bighorn sheep are like right there, huh? They have like that. One of them was fighting the other earlier, then one, the third joined in and it like broke them apart. That was so fun. Agua Caliente Park has a few great hiking trails. Whenever I spend time in the desert, I'm reminded that there is so much life and beauty and something I often think about as lifeless or barren. It reminds me that life is precious, persistent, and resilient. Before we left, we wanted to make our first flying monkey Fuda Fafa walk epic, but I needed to find my selfie stick. The sun was starting to set and I noticed the winds had picked up quite a bit. The windsock was showing a really strong tailwind for departing runway 11. The other option would be to depart runway 29 to the west, but that puts you flying right towards a valley with rising terrain and a big hill, which at 460 feet high at half a mile would require at least a 920 foot per nautical mile climb gradient, which would be about 1500 feet per minute to just barely clear it. So the chart supplement publication recommends landing runway 29 and taking off runway 11, wind permitting. To the east for 11, the terrain is almost flat and there are no obstacles to climb over. The day before the flight, as part of my go, no-go decision process, I checked windy.com for the wind forecast down there. Let that oil temp get up to speed. I could see that the forecast winds were out of the west at six knots. Clicking the wind gust button showed the wind gusts predicted at 20 knots around 7 p.m., which would likely be when we would take off out of there. I ran some performance calculations. I got the forecast temperature, barrel pressure, and dew point from Windy. I calculated the density altitude for a predicted takeoff time out of Agua Caliente and used my Cherokee 6 POH performance charts to determine that at max gross weight, we ought to need about 1,300 feet of ground roll. Using my handy rule of thumb document I keep in foreflight, I applied the tailwind calculation for 20 knots of tailwind and calculated we ought to need about 1,850 feet of ground roll. The strip is 2,500 feet, so we have a 650 foot margin, although old planes rarely perform at book numbers. I checked the Google Maps satellite picture and noted a visual landmark, the windsock, at the halfway point on the runway, which could serve as a takeoff abort decision point if we hadn't reached 70% of our rotation speed. If I, uh... If I don't make 42 knots by the windsock, we're putting on the brakes pretty strong. This might all seem like a lot of math, but here's the thing. My passengers are counting on me. I have precious cargo, and I'll pursue every bit of information and planning I can to make the flight safer. I looked at that windsock for a while and weighed my options. The headwind would help with climbing and turning away from terrain on runway 29, but any other problems would be more difficult to handle with terrain in the mix. To depart runway 11, all I had to do was get the plane off the ground before we ran out of pavement. So with the blessing of science and math, I made the decision to depart with the tailwind rather than try to outclimb the rising terrain. I was able to confirm the density altitude on the Dynan HDX system. My uh, density altitude is 3,054 feet here. I also knew that with the digital airspeed tape and markings for VX and VY, I could hit critical speeds precisely. He doesn't. Given the situation, what would you have done? Let me know in the YouTube comments. 42 knots, what we're looking for, we're rotating at 60, applying in ground effects to, to 85 knots.
All good, bud. Yeah? Nope. Oh. To me, in the moment, this takeoff seemed to be cutting it close. If you want to know precisely how close, I'm publishing a detailed analysis video for members over on the SoCal Flying Monkey Patreon page. There's lots of bonus content over there, including full IFR IMC flights, behind the scenes making of, and some other odds and ends, so come on over and say hi. If you're interested in making your own monkey mask, I'm leaving a link to the template in the description. We had fun making this easy craft project together. And if you make a mask, feel free to send me a shot of you being a flying monkey. You may end up appearing in a future video. Aviation is amazing as it constantly challenges us with new scenarios. This day pushed me to the edge of my comfort level, but meeting this challenge with thorough preparation taught me a lot both about the airplane and myself and brought our family together for another adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking like and subscribe. It really helps us out. As always, thanks for coming along on the journey with us.